Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Peters, one of President Biden's first acts after taking office was to issue Executive Order 14006, mandating that contracts with privately owned detention facilities not be renewed. The order is intended, quote, to, de to decrease incarceration levels by reducing profit-based incentives to incarcerate by phasing out the federal government's reliance on private privately operated criminal detention facilities. This order has created many unintended consequences, including the closing of the Willacy County Regional Detention Facility in Raymondville, Texas. The decision has had tremendous negative consequences with little to no obvious upside, forcing inmates to travel hundreds of miles round trip for court appearances, impacting the accessibility of legal counsel, and making family visits significantly more difficult. It has also caused administration issues for the prison system and harmed the local economy by eliminating these jobs. Literally every stakeholder that has a role to play in these cases is opposed to this Biden policy. That includes the defense bar, the federal public defender, the U.S. attorney, even the federal bench. All have publicly asked for this policy to be rescinded. Unfortunately, as with the open borders under Joe Biden, the Biden administration doesn't give a damn about how their woke policies actually affect South Texas or the lives of regular people. Ms. Peters, how has Executive Order 14006 impacted the Bureau of Prisons' ability to house inmates, and has, has it been a negative impact or a positive impact? Thank you, Senator. So we were able to come into compliance with the executive order last, the end of last November, and uh, bring in those uh, individuals from those facilities that were closed, and we were able to safely absorb them into our current population. Okay, that that you didn't answer my question. How has it impacted the BOP, and has it been positive or negative? I, Senator, I don't know that I can put it in a positive or negative category. What I can so say is, is, is the defense bar and the U.S. attorney and the federal bench are they all wrong? I'm not familiar with their opinions and their reasons for opposing Okay, unfortunately, order. you're illustrating that the Biden administration doesn't care about South Texas if you don't even know the impact it's having on all the stakeholders. All right, let's shift to the topic Senator Lee was just asking you about, because I have to say I found your answers to him thoroughly unacceptable. The 2022 Transgender Offender Manual issued by the Bureau of Prison through your predecessors reverted back to the Obama administration's initial designation uh, and housing programming assignments. Notably, biological sex at birth is no longer the controlling determinant. Right now today, how many biological males are housed in female prisons under BOP? Senator, I don't have those numbers in front of me today. Why don't you? We could look at them and get back to you. Why don't you? Did I just you, don't have them top of Did you know head. you were going to be asked that today? No, Senator. Oh, you didn't. Have you been asked that before? On the record, Senator? Yes. I don't recall. You were asked a year ago in writing, and you failed to answer it in writing. You knew damn well you are going to be asked it today, but you don't want to answer it. Senator Lee asked, why don't you report the numbers? You don't report the numbers because you don't want people to know the numbers. So the fact that you sit there and say, I don't know, he said 1,300. Is that number in the ballpark? 1,300 as it relates to which category, Senator? Biological males housed in female prisons. No, that would be a much larger number. Which is a larger number? So the number of individuals who even identify as transgender at the Federal Bureau of Prisons is around 1,700. And the number of individuals that are housed in institutions not conforming with their biological sex are very low. Uh, very low. Are we talking 100? Are we talking 10? Are I we? I, we will look at the numbers. We're talking less than 10. So you, your testimony here, I just want to understand, your testimony here today is there are fewer than 10 biological males, human beings that were born male, who are housed in the female prisons. Is that your testimony? That is my understanding, and I will confirm that and get back to you. Okay. Of the 1,700 uh, prisoners you referenced, uh, how many of them are convicted sex offenders? I do not know the answer to that, Senator. Uh, are you aware that, that uh, Great Britain's numbers, according to a January 2022 report, is the proportion of male-born tra uh, transgender offenders who are sex offenders in the UK prison system is roughly 
significantly higher than the 18% of the general population? Are, are those numbers consistent with the American numbers? I have, I'm not familiar with Great Britain's numbers. So let me ask you this. How many female inmates have been sexually assaulted by biological males who BOP has housed in female prisons? Senator, I would have to look into that and get back to you. Uh, do you have an obligation to protect those female prisoners? Absolutely. And so have you examined how many women have been sexually assaulted by biological males that BOP has placed in the prison with those women? I, I have not, Senator, but I will tell you that safety and security and the placement of every individual in our custody is top of mind and the most important. So if it's top of mind, why haven't you examined how many, how many have been sexually assaulted? This is an obvious question. If you put a man with male genitals, with a male body in a female prison who's a convicted sex offender, it's not rocket science that there's a real risk those women are gonna be, gonna be victims of sexual assault. How is it possible that you haven't even asked the question how many women are getting sexually assaulted because of the policies of the Biden administration? Senator, I assure you that safety and security of these individuals are top of mind. And if So you were, haven't asked the question. If there was misconduct, those individuals would be held accountable. Thank you, Senator Cruz. Um, as you probably have noted, this is the Senate Judiciary Committee with a subspecialty in transgender politics. Uh, it seems that every time we have a hearing, we're talking about transgender. Uh, I know it's a topic of great concern to my colleagues, and they're welcome to ask, ask their questions. Uh, we estimate that one half of 1% of the population of the United States is transgender. Uh, you would think it were a lot larger in light of some of the attention being paid to the issue. But having said that, I want to go back to the point that was made by Senator Graham. We're talking about the safety of all prisoners, all prisoners, regardless of their cisgender, their, uh, whether they're going through transition or any other circumstances. We also understand that uh, uh, we are dealing with the possibility of those who identify as transgender being victimized. Uh, I'd like to ask the director, has that been an issue? Senator, it has not been an issue that has risen to my level. Well, what we, we have been told is that transgender women held in male facilities are uniquely vulnerable, and according to the Justice Department, are abused at higher rates than other population. Pursuant to preempt, U.S. prisons already house many women who are transgender in women's facilities where they are safest. Uh, safety of the prisoners is the highest priority. Regardless, there I, I see you nodding in agreement, and you said that earlier. I agree. So if you would clarify the, 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 some of the questions that were asked uh, earlier, I would appreciate that very much. Uh, I want to address a couple other issues that came up here. One of the senators suggested we needed a second panel this year. I tried that last year, and I won't name names, but the, some of the senators did not return for the second panel. Uh, I am meeting with the National Union uh, this afternoon, and I keep in touch with them on a regular basis and will continue to. I also note that uh, we seem to have bipartisan agreement, which I want to uh, make sure is headlined, that the BOP needs significantly more funding for staffing, building maintenance, and repairs, and other critical needs. Let's see if that translates into a bipartisan request for uh, appropriations to match with that. Uh, you have an important job. You've been told uh, a lot of different things today. I would tell you that senators really take it personally when you don't answer their questions. It, it's more than almost any other thing. And I would recommend that you make that a high priority. Uh, it, it will lead to more um, comfortable uh, circumstances in our next meeting if you can do that. And, I thank you for your service, and with no further questions to come before the committee, we stand adjourned. Thank you, sir.